Hi, this is Andip Jali and Manos Berlakis, presenting case 277 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that discusses some of the challenges deciding about how much to push when doing a complex CTO intervention. The patient was a young gentleman with previous coronary bypass graft surgery and significant angina that was sent for PCI of a right coronary artery CTO after a previous failed attempt. He did have slightly reduced ejection fraction, 35 to 40 percent. This is a coronary angiogram. There is a disease in the LAD with competitive flow distally from the lima. There is occlusion of the right coronary artery with an ambiguous proximal cap at the takeoff of an acute marginal branch. And this was the target vessel. So the challenges here are the ambiguity because of all the um, branches coming off from the right coronary artery. The distal RCA seemed to be a good sized vessel that had uh, a large posterior lateral as well. And this was filling uh, through both septals as well as an epicardial collateral from the circumflex. So our plan here, given the ambiguity, was to try to cross uh, retrogradely through a septal, undergradely, and then leave the epicardial retrograde as the last resort. So we started with uh, septal surfing. Uh, we did use a SUO3 guide wire that uh, was not successful. And then we tried the Sion Black. We had some difficulty. The Sion Black is a much more aggressive guide wire. And uh, we did have uh, a dissection of some of the septals without any consequence. Then we changed through a different septal. Once again, trying different wires, the SUO3. But again, having a lot of difficulty advancing the wire through the septal. Eventually, trying again with the C on black, and uh, we were able to advance it through the septal until it crossed into the uh, posterior descending artery. So part of the lesson here is sometimes one has to be patient and persistent, and uh, finding the pathway through the septals can be tricky, but eventually can be achieved. And again, the C on black uh, is a very useful wire for this crossing. After that, we delivered the Caravel microcatheter, did a, an injection that shows um, a, a CTO at the distal cap, at the distal bifurcation of the PDA and the right posterior lateral. So we used a guide next to guide wire to advance the microcatheter slightly into the occlusion, and then we switched uh, to a Gladius Mongo. We did have difficulty with the Mongo just trying to go back into the posterior lateral, but eventually, after multiple attempts and repositioning, we were able um, to advance the knuckle inside the distal right coronary artery. We then tried to do guide extension reverse card. And we had a lot of difficulty. And when there's difficulty in reverse card, one of the ways to figure it out is to do an intravascular ultrasound. And what we're seeing on the IVUS is that the undergrade wire is in the true lumen, whereas the retrograde wire is in the false lumen. So this is one of the four scenarios, both in the true lumen, both in the false lumen, and then one each. And the solution for this particular scenario, when the undergrade is true and the retrograde is false, is to create dissections into the under, over the undergrade wire to allow connection of the two spaces. To do this, we did use a bigger balloon, three to five and then four millimeters, and eventually we were successful in uh, crossing into the undergrade guide catheter. We then uh, externalized the guide wire, and then the next step was to try to secure the posterior lateral. Again, the patient did have a large right posterior lateral, is filling through the supercardial mainly, and we did try a workhorse wire, but we did have a lot of difficulty getting into the posterior lateral, and uh, it turns out that we were extra plaque. So how to approach this? We ended up delivering a stingray balloon to try to re-enter. But despite multiple attempts with stick and swap, we were not able to cross into the true lumen. And then uh, we determined, we debated whether we should just leave it there, do the star technique, or try the epicardial. 
and the epicardial was admittedly a fairly complex branch. It's coming from the circumflex. It's a small size and fairly tortuous. And this is the question, how far should one push to try to get complete revascularization? Yes, we do want to recanalize both branches, but there's also a risk involved, when, especially when doing retrograde through epicardial collaterals. So a three wire fairly soft and atraumatic. However, um, we were unable to get through, and then in the next ejection, we now have a perforation over this epicardial collateral. What to do now? We uh, put a balloon up and then uh, put quickly stents into the undergrade, and then took a picture to see if we still had some extravasation. So the balloon is still up here on the right coronary artery. There was no pericardial infusion or tamponade, although we did see the structure that seemed to be in the atrioventricular groove and were concerned for a contained hematoma. So we decided that we should occlude it. So we did take uh, coils. We did place a 2 by 4 millimeter concerto coil inside this collateral. And then that uh, did close the connection. However, despite that, there was still um, extravasation coming up through another collateral that seems to be coming from this large uh, atrial branch. Discussed with cardiac surgery, um, and that uh, didn't work out. So eventually we decided to occlude the other branch. So we were able to advance uh, a microcatheter and deployed a second coil within the other feeder vessel to this uh, area of the perforation. And after doing that, we now do not have any more staining within the area of the perforation. And we do have undergrade flow into the PDA. There is limited flow in the posterior lateral. But obviously, at this point, this was several hours in, and uh, we did not do any more attempts to recanalize that. So, several lessons. The first one is that IVUS can help determine the mechanism of difficulty completing the reverse card. In this case, the scenario was retrograde false undergrade true lumen. Solution for that was a big balloon on the undergrade. If it was the other way around, retrograde true and undergrade false, then the solution would have been a stiff wire, highly penetrating wire uh, in the retrograde direction. When it comes to complications, we do have an epicardial collateral perforation that this can be a problem, especially in bypass patients, because it can lead to a loculated hematoma. So it should be managed uh, promptly to prevent that formation. We did place a coil, but there was residual feeding of that area through another collateral. So we put a second coil to be able to close uh, both uh, uh, feeding vessels. And the final conclusion here is that sometimes maybe it's best not push too much. And yes, we want to recanalize all major branches of a bifurcation, but sometimes if the risk of uh, opening one of the branches becomes high, it may be best to just uh, get flow into one branch and then potentially bring the patient back or reassess the symptoms after recanalization of the first branch is completed. Thank you.